Um, I've highlighted things in, in nice, nice colors there. And what we need is to see and understand that this is Finance Solver. So if you think about it, it, it talks about regular monthly payments. So that's really a trigger that compound interest formula is not going to work. Uh, arithmetic or geometric sequences, no. Just talk about regular monthly payments and it's loan. So straight away Finance Solver. When you get the Finance Solver out, you see that there's an N needed. There's an I needed. I'm not sure if this is in the correct order. There's a PV needed. There's a PMT needed. Um, there's an that's okay. There's an FV needed. There's a PPY and there's a CPY. Crikey. There's a lot of things needed. All right. So let's have a look. N is the number of repayments. Everyone just about got this right. It's three years. And notice it's compounded monthly with monthly repayments. So this is 36. Three times 12. I, the interest rate, is just 4.1. They want to know the yearly interest rate. You don't have to break that down into divided by 12 for monthly. The calculator sorts that out. The present value, this is money that came into you from the bank. So the present value is 5,000. The payment is the big mystery. The final value needs to be zero, right? At the end of three years, you want to have nothing outstanding. Uh, the PPY and the CPY usually are the same. In this way, we can see clearly it's compounded monthly. All right, so all of those different colors... There's a one, two, three, four, five colors. And then they match, well, they match one, two, three, four, kind of five inputs here. So that's the important thing. Now, when we go to the finance solver, let's just remind ourselves of where it is. Uh, menu, finance, finance solver. Okay, so let's feed in 36, 4.1. Present value is 5,000. Final value is zero, PPY and CPY are both 12. And now remember, we click on the thing we're trying to solve for and press enter. So I've got this payment is equal to negative 147.84. So actually, we're making a $147.84 payment per month, right? The negative is because it's going away from us. So the calculator is pretty clever. Anything coming towards us positive? Anything going away from us is a negative, right? Everyone should be able to get that two marks. The second bit was a bit trickier and a bit naughty. Part B, calculate the amount still remaining to be repaid after Anya has been making payments for one year. So let, let me talk you through this. If I've been making payments for one year, how many years left of repayments? Two years. So that how many repayments in total then for two years? 24. And how much am I paying each month? 24 times 147.84. Yeah? So while I borrowed 5,000, I'm going to eventually pay back more than 5,000 because that's how interest works and loans, okay? So the total I'm going to pay back is 36 times the 14784. I've already paid back 12 lots of it, so I've still got 24 lots of it to pay back. Does that feel okay? A lot of you were thinking logically, if I've already paid 12 lots, I'll just take that away from 5,000. That's how much I've got left to pay. But you've got, you've got more than 5,000 to pay in total, right, because of the interest. I was chatting in the collaboration chamber, that's called the maths office, the collaboration chamber, several teachers, we were interpreting this question in different ways. And there's another way of interpreting, interpreting? Interpreting this question that goes really deep and deeper thinking. I'm going to park that for now. We'll come back to it maybe in the next term. But no, there's actually a different way of answering this using the finance solver again. It gives you a different answer because it answers a slightly different question. I think for us now, we're happy to say, well, if I have this in total to pay back to the bank and I pay this much, this is how much I've got left to pay. It's 24 of those payments. I think when you do that calculator, we can just copy that from Finance Solver, press Escape, paste, paste onto our page, then times it by 24, and we get this. 3548.22. I think that would be okay to the nearest dollar. 
And, and this is key now to the last part. After one year, the finance company changes its interest rate on the loan to 5.3%. This is real life. If you, sometimes when you take out a loan, you fix the interest rate over the life of the loan. Okay? That sometimes happens for short-term loans. For mortgages, buying a house, that could be 20, 25, 30 years. And sometimes it's only fixed over the first five years. And then it goes to whatever the going rate is worldwide. So you could be paying a low percentage rate, which is good, and it suddenly jump up the next few years. So that's what's happened here. So let's go to Finance Solver again. Menu, Finance, Finance Solver. Okay, so there's only there's two years of payments to make here. So what do I do with the N? What's it changed to? 24. Beautiful. Interest rate now? 5.3. Horrible. And here's the key. What's the present value of the loan that I need to pay back? Yeah, it's this new amount, right? Now, if you had a different amount, I checked every one of your workings with Finance Solver to see if your answer works through, okay? So if you got a 3,200 here, I fed the 3,200 to my calculator just to see if your working was correct. And if it was, you get full marks for the last part. Yeah, so even if part B is wrong, but you use part B in part C, and you did the working out correct, you get full marks for part C. Okay, it's correct follow-through marks. All right, so I will put in the 3548.22, why not? Um, payment is what I'm trying to work out, I'll just delete that. Future value still needs to be zero, I want to pay it all back, and then 12 and 12, click in here, press go. So now can you see my, hopefully this makes sense, that my monthly payments now jump up to $156.14. Doesn't sound a great deal, right? But your previous payments were 147, 148, now you're 156. It makes sense because the interest rate's gone up. Beautiful.